Currently, there are more people on the left that are saying that it is not over for Kamala Harris. This gentleman, I believe, worked on the Kamala Harris, um, the Kamala Harris campaign. I could be wrong. I think that's what I found on Twitter. But let's listen to what this young uh, this young gentleman has to say. It is not over for Kamala. And all of you celebrating a Trump victory before the votes are even fully counted, may I remind you that a lot can change at the last minute. And even if we do fail to win the presidency for Kamala, after all the work I've done for white dudes for Kamala over the last few months. It's also called white dudes for Harris. So this guy uh, didn't even get the name right, but white dudes for Harris. Really effective, by the way. He will return in 2028. Kamala 2028 will be the greatest political comeback the world has ever seen, not just America, but the world. And I firmly believe that Kamala is still the best person in the whole of the United States to be the president of this country. And if we band together now, if we pull back some of those white dudes who went for Trump this time, by growing the white dudes for Harris campaign, we can make a permanent change. We can put, put the MAGA crowd away once and for all. <laughs> I'm dispirited. I am dispirited by what has happened, but we can't just give up. We can't just stop now. It's so close. It was so close. There's just so much hate in this country. So much hate and misinformation from Elon. And this, we've got to fight back. We've got to fight back. Kamala 2028. We're coming back. <laughs> Give this man a Grammy. Wow. That uh, was not expecting the uh, the cry there at the end, the fake cry. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know how to react to that outside of uh, uh, Kamala was the worst candidate that the country has ever seen. And I can guarantee you Kamala will not be the Democratic nominee in 2028. But please, I'd love for her to be the Democratic nominee once more. That would be the best case scenario for people um, and for the sake of America. But uh, yeah, that is uh, that is someone from the Harris campaign. Really, at least, you know, you can say that they believe in the person they're representing. And there's something to be said for that. All right, we're going to look at the next clip. This is a clip of a uh, news anchor talking about the importance of Turning Point and Charlie Kirk made in this election. Let's roll the clip. So I see one young man who actually told me he he was on the fence, but it was Charlie Kirk and Turning Point USA who have been in and around this campus sharing the message of Donald Trump that ultimately pushed him over. And he said it's one of the reasons we're seeing all those Make America, Great, uh, Make America Great Again hats on campus because they brought them and distributed them uh, to the students here. Katie? I mean, listen, this is uh, this is one of the differences between the left, others on MSNBC and CBS saying you are stupid. You don't know how economics works. Where Charlie Kirk and Turning Point says, hey, we're going to make a difference in college students and we're going to educate them. We're going to have conversations with them. If you haven't, we're probably going to later in uh, future shows react to some of the Charlie Kirk um, conversations he has with students. I really believe that Charlie's heart and the reason why he does those debates are in the right place because um, what Charlie Kirk, for those that don't know, he'll set up a booth in college campuses and he'll have debates with students. The students will come up, call him all sorts of names, and he's generally very patient with them and helping them think through things logically. And the left views that as a waste of time or hate speech. And really what it is is the education for students that uh, wouldn't hear these ideas outside because it's not being taught in their, their schools. In fact, I'm going to be going in a couple months to a turning point event called AmFest. So if you currently are not following me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you're going to want to make sure you're doing that because that is where all of the updates for that trip are going to be represented on Media Row and interviewing some of the top conservatives in the world at this event, probably going to be able to talk to Charlie too, which will be an absolute blast. You're going to want to make sure you follow me on Twitter at Dylan M England. Um, but let's keep going with a couple more clips. Now, some people have been uh, poking some holes in the, the democratic strategy, the, the Democrats in their strategy to campaign Kamala Harris. Someone commented on this clip. I just can't believe this didn't win it for them. Let's roll the clip.
Yeah, I... 52 days and we are turning the page! 52 days and it's bye-bye, Donald Trump! You can always just see it in the eyes. For those listening, it's just the wide eyes, crazy, shaking eyes, but we're turning the page. Goodbye, Donald Trump. We are turning the page. You know, there were so many interesting moments and choices that the Harris campaign used. And, you know, in fact, even using people um, that couldn't even speak and needed a teleprompter to speak. And there's a lot of interesting choices for uh, their speakers. Even uh, Waltz was an interesting choice for Harris um, as a VP. But they wonder, but no, 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 it's, it's, they didn't win because, uh, but they didn't win because, because, because of fascism, not because they were, they maybe ran a terrible campaign. All right. Um, now listen, there are other common, like more just people that, um, have not t- taken this election very well. Uh, a lot of people say that there's a mental health crisis going on in our country right now. I agree. There is a uh, no one is exercising. Everyone's on their phones, scrolling through TikToks, going brain dead. So yeah, there is a hundred percent a mental epidemic. And, and here's a poor soul that um, just could not handle Trump uh, being reelected. Let's roll the clip. This is not okay. This is not okay. This 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 simply will not do. And this is not okay. And I'm not good with this. This is, this is sick. This is sick. That should not be there. And they're just wrong. And you're wrong. And everything is wrong. And this house is not even my house. You just bought it for me and I don't want it. Yeah, I, uh, you know, it's easy to make fun of people like that. And I really don't, you know, there's some things that people say that are stupid that I'm more than happy to make fun of. But when I see that, I, I, I'm more actually just pulled in my soul to, to just <laughs> pray for that individual. I mean, the, to have TDS or Trump derangement syndrome to the point where you are so angry, screaming that life is unfair, it basically just shows that um, all of your priorities that Kamala Harris or that the left is going or the government, the big government is just always looking out for you and you need the government on your side to be happy. And that's a lie that so many people believe. It's a lie that's just killing people. The, not even Donald Trump is going to save everything. Conservatives and Christians especially understand that God's the one in control. And no, and no matter what happens, God is the one that's in control. And it doesn't matter who gets elected. I, I actually said this on the live stream during the election, uh, the election reaction that we did. I said, you know what? If Kamala wins this, it's going to be really sad. I'm going to be frustrated. But at the end of the day, I can go to bed knowing that God is the final authority over all the kings. The Old Testament says that God has his way in the hearts of kings and moves their hearts like rivers of like rivers move of water. And so there is there's safety in in the belief that God is in control. And some people just don't have that. So, um, man, that is a very visceral reaction. And I hope this person finds peace. And I know know what they're going through and now they're not going to find it there. Uh, in a little bit more lighthearted of a clip, uh, here is a clip. And someone said, uh, Trump walking back into the White House uh, on January 20th, 2025. Let's, uh, let's roll the clip. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you. I'm just going to like that. Oh, that's awesome. Trump's like, I'm here. Roll the red carpet. Trump is back. We are back for another. Oh, that's awesome. 